Today on Mysterious Morsels, we're talking about Bigfoot. So Bigfoot, Sasquatch, kind of interchangeable, uh, both fuzzy guys. Basically, you know, he's kind of a forest creature dwelling kind of dude that people go on these adventures to find. And for the most part, it's been like this North America thing that people have gone for the Pacific Northwestern to try and find. And he's this tall, hairy human-like but not quite mythical creature and a lot of people get into it and they're seriously like Bigfoot slash Sasquatch enthusiasts and they dedicate their lives like finding Bigfoot. Personally, I think there's better things to do, but I've never been a big Bigfoot fan, but he's out there. You know, you got the old movies with John Lithgow, Harry and the Hendersons and this kind of personable, fuzzy Uh, creature that would uh, be a house guest. That's not the case. I don't think you should invite him in. Definitely not to a campsite. Um, People offer so many evidence and sightings and proof of his existence. It's been going on even in different shows and documentaries. And people have talked about those pieces of evidence that are, uh, you know, they saw a fuzzy video or there's supposedly photographs and there's video and audio and hair samples and these large footprints and stuff. And this is going on forever and ever. Scientists have historically discounted the existence of Bigfoot. Basically, it's just a uh, combination of folklore and misidentification or some sort of a hoax. I'm sure at some point an animal that was super furry happened to walk by. Maybe it stood up on its hind legs. Who knows? Somebody took it for a man or or somebody that could walk on two, you know, yada, yada. It turned into a thing. However, uh, Bigfoot is mentioned a lot. And the indigenous people in North America mention him a lot. So he's wrote about in fairy tales and cultures and sort of like a tall tale situation saying that he lived among them in the forest. Didn't seem to be a conflictual situation. It was like they were cool with him. He was this legend and he was there before them. They respected him and the beast respected them kind of a deal. And they just called him Bigfoot. Uh, Petroglyphs that were created by tribes from a long time ago uh, had like the painted rock is what they called it, or allegedly some of the uh, depictions of early Bigfoot called the family. Now, see, my the family being Italians a real different family, so I don't know what they're talking about, but Uncle Guido's not part of Bigfoot. I'm just saying. Um, the local tribes people would call the glyphs the hairy man, which, you know, that could have been like five guys I know and, and teach with. But anyway, they're estimated to be supposedly 500 to 1,000 years old if there is any way to ID or, or categorize a uh, catalog of Bigfoot. Spanish explorers and Mexican um, settlers at the time were saying that there were these dark watchers and they would tell tales of this about large creatures that could stalk the camps at night. Um, supposed stories of these hairy creatures in forests uh, known to scream really loudly and possibly steal livestock. And in all this, I haven't seen or heard anything about people being, you know, thrown away or hurt or mauled or anything like that. I mean, maybe that was the case, but nobody's really seemed to talk about an origin story where they were inhumane. Um, they just talk about big footprints or, you know, people having some sort of uh, encounter, um, you know, or there was hair or whatever, but nobody ever seems to be like stomped on or taken away. It might have been animals or they saw him and that was that, but I've never gotten the um, the malevolence uh, factor. It seems that the, the prints have been like up to 16 inches long or bigger for the footprints. And some construction sites started using uh, wooden foot models in the dirt around their sites to scare off people that were trying to steal their materials as more of a deterrent because people would believe that Bigfoot slash Sasquatch was there and uh, he has yet to be proven real. So it really comes down to what you choose to call him and his backstory on him. And again, you think of things that iconically utilize this, like you've got this whole, um, you know, like I said, Harry and Henderson's in an old movie. You know, he's a reference a lot of times is like in a folklore, tall tale, scary story. And then we'll be talking soon about his snowy friend, cousin, the Yeti, because you can even go as far as to see how Disney picks up uh, and, you know, where they kind of leave off. I guess he's like his snowy uh, cousin that hangs out in the Himalayas. But Bigfoot's supposedly like a Pacific Northwestern or foresty kind of character. And, uh, I haven't seen them. If you like this type of content, scare the like button into turning blue and subscribe. Don't forget to hit the notification bell so you don't miss out on future videos. Thanks for watching. If you want to watch more content like this, click on the video. Also, don't forget to leave us a comment telling us your favorite mythical creature or anything else that you'd like to see.